never seen such a great example of you know what we call project-based learning. I mean, you know, all the new training and all the teachers speak now is about project-based learning. And this is the best example of project-based learning I've ever seen in my life. All right, this will be the last round. Okay, lunch, this will be over in the next couple minutes. Three, two, one, go! Here we go. Autonomous period begins, three robots moving. Being driven in front of the Red Alliance driver station. 1031 is up with the hook. It's up in the air. 40 seconds remaining. Blue Alliance playing with only one robot. High Desert Troys. Frustration standing behind the driver station with their arms crossed. Not how they wanted this one to play out. It allows our students to have an activity to do after school, get off the streets, do something academic. Every student that's been walks away with a whole new sense of and this is actually an exciting sport. The person that scores the highest score is the winner. You have a human shooter which shoots these purple five-point balls into a mobile goal or basket. You can also get 50 points from hanging on a eight-foot tall pole. The combination of soccer, basketball, and pull-up. These students are a part of the John O'Connell High School Boilermakers Robotics Team from San Francisco. My name is Kim Smith. I'm 14 years old. And then I really liked it, so I decided to be a pool member this year. I heard it from my math teacher, which told me, told me a little bit about it. He told me that we were the only team in San Francisco. I'd like to prove that San Francisco and our robotics team can win. Anyway, so I hear this story about this local San Francisco high school that has come out of the blue and has... O'Connell is a financially strapped school in the city's Mission District. Its fledgling robotics team just earned a stock... The first week is... Uh, really exciting. We, they release the information about what the contest is. You get your kit of parts. It's a whole bunch of strange motors and sensors and bits of wire and nobody has any idea how it all works. Before building the robot, we designed the robot and we have little sketches to prove that. Yes, we worked at City College campus in their engineering um, department where they had all their tools and stuff. We had an established partnership already, but the partnership that we developed with um, the people over in the engineering department at City College was really solidified and, and grew through the process of, of doing the robotics. All of a sudden, uh, around week four or week five, if you're on track, you have a machine that, that drives around. And, and at that point, kids really take ownership of it because they, they, they say, well, this is our robot, and they know how it all works. Overseen by teachers, every task is ultimately the students, from writing grants to building hardware, and now raising travel funds. Like building a website and, uh, and, and organizing documents that explain what our team's all about and what we want and, and of course fundraising. We had to do fundraising, you know, and that involves writing and um, and then there was another aspect, strategizing. Some Bay Area kids are asking for a little help tonight. They have overcome some enormous obstacles to succeed as a team in a very unlikely area. Students ate peanut butter and jelly every day and walk wherever they needed to go. And now they need help. And dang, if we didn't get that phone call, he said, how much do you need? Yesterday afternoon, quiet ceremony, Macromedia of San Francisco presented a $7,500 check to the Beaming team. The kids always thought we were going. They were always optimistic from the beginning. You know, they're out there selling juice pops for 50 cents each and saying, yeah, we're going to go. We thought we weren't going to go, and then all of a sudden we can go now, and we just know we're going to do really well.
something that, you know, it's not, it's not even about a classroom. It's, it's about a competition against other schools. There's cheerleaders, there's music. Three, and two, we walked in the doors, we all looked at each other and we're like, wow, we're going to get beaten up here. know who we're competing against and who we need to beat and who we want to team up with. I sat in the rows and I had a book with me and I just took a ton of notes. If they're good at this, they're bad at this, um, and then I just comprised my notes together and I realized that there was specifically one team that I thought was really good for us. It had everything that we needed. We needed points and it gave us points. competition began and our robot just was performing perfectly. We won seven out of nine of our qualifying rounds, then we uh, went into the final rounds. We were nervous until the last five seconds because we had troubles getting onto the platform. People's legs were shaking. I went crazy. <laughs> I really did go crazy. I was jumping up and down. I've never had such school spirit in my life. It was just crazy. Everybody was everywhere, jumping up and down. I mean, even the teams that lost were jumping up and down, congratulating us. The fact that they were working, you know, with freshmen and seniors together, that they were here after school, totally engaged, you know, eager to go out to City College on Saturday and work in the shop. Um, that, that kind of enthusiasm for learning and exploring is is what education should always be.